the Himalayan mountains. At the top of the world, rapidly melting glaciers are among the most dramatic indicators of climate change. Here in the Everest region, the Imja Lake is one of the largest and fastest growing glacial lakes in Nepal and could pose a serious threat to local populations downstream if it were to burst its terminal moraine and flood the valley below. But in spite of 30 years of research, uncertainty surrounds our understanding of Imja Lake. Local people have largely been excluded from the growing international publicity and research focused on the lake and are uncertain about their future. Before all the peoples came here, all the INGs, NGOs came here and they just researched, they don't believe, bring us solutions. They are not sharing with the local people, they make a lot of promises, but they never de deliver any of their promises. Such a Imja Avenue, yes, Chetramaja, there is Durgar Nounza, there is Manap Chatunza, yes, Chetramatrina, Yanti Gilerata, Nepal, Adiraja Borine, Tulu Chatunza, Bori Paretak. People are scared. They are, they are thinking that the um, huge disasters, disaster is going to happen in the future. In response, the United States Agency for International Development, or USAID, through its Climate Change Resilient Development Project, has initiated the High Mountain Glacial Watershed Program to assist communities in reducing the risk from glacial threats and develop skills to adapt to climate change. The journey begins in the Solokumbu region. The team will travel up the valley to visit key Sherpa villages that are facing the risk of glacial lake outburst floods and other climate-related threats. Climate change is ultimately a, a challenge for people and, and so we have to start by uh, talking to communities to understand these kinds of, of issues uh, and their perspectives first. We had a really participatory workshop for the last two days. I think one of the things that worked extremely well was a mix of, of explaining things to people but also giving them the opportunity to, to work together in groups. A lot of the communities were able to really relate to some of these examples, whether it was agriculture, whether it was flooding, heavy rains, or even livestock, that they could put climate adaptation within their own community context. <laughs> This is one of the first times that people have come and, and spoken to communities here. And so giving them an opportunity to understand a little bit better what climate change is, uh, some of the risks that it may pose, and then to start thinking about options for reducing those risks in the future, making sure that their voice gets heard in some of the discussions about the climate change adaptation that are going on, some of the projects that are being planned in this valley. Meanwhile, at Imja Lake, scientists and engineers are performing field measurements with the goal of better determining the amount of water currently in the lake and the mass of the quickly melting glacier. So behind me, you see the, uh, the mountains with the uh, Imjit Glacier below them. The glacier is calving off into the lake, and as it does that, then the lake volume increases, which puts additional pressure on the terminal moraine, which, given the right trigger event, such as an earthquake, could cause a devastating flood downstream, damaging communities and potential loss of life. So we are trying to uh, map the bottom elevation of the lake. To do that, we have a sonar system, and we mount the sonar system on a six-person boat that we have hauled all the way up here to 5,100 meters above sea level. We're now going to go out on the boat, measuring the depth of the water in the lake. Way to go, Alton. I'll look at the right side. Left, left, uh, right, right. Yeah, right, right, see the. What we did basically was a series of transects across the lake and then when we got to the glacial terminus we found that about 200 meters of the glacier since last May had collapsed leaving in its place hundreds of icebergs. A 
it's just remarkable. I've never seen so much ice just lost in just three short months. So climate change is definitely happening. Previous estimates of the volume of Imja Lake um, have been 33 to 35 million cubic meters. What we found was that the lake's volume was double what was previously known, in excess of 60 million cubic meters. <laughs> One of the other things that we did was to conduct a ground penetrating radar survey, GPR survey. It's the first time that this transect of the Imja Glacier has been done. Inside the terminal moraine, there is quite a lot of ice. And we've been using our ground penetrating radar system to map out the location of this ice core so that we can direct any excavation which might go on to drain water out of the lake. Let's go down and then up that ridge. We found very uh, remarkable information, which is that the depth of the ice at the end of the lake is approximately 250 meters deep, which is about 150 meters below the bottom of the lake. So there's plenty of room there for the lake to expand and grow and become much larger than it is today. So the data we've been collecting is very important for informing the management decisions that are being made regarding how to protect downstream communities from a glow from Imja Lake. To me, this has been one of the most remarkable field expeditions I've ever uh, participated in. From beginning to end, it just hummed. And I think that the outputs, the products that will come from this expedition will be really significant. We're really excited to, to be able to connect with the communities and give them an opportunity to, to learn a little bit more about what's happening and to also think about what matters to them and what sorts of things they may be able to do in the future to address these challenges. I'm <laughs> <laughs>